You know how vintage guitars are supposed to be more desirable, better, more authentic, um, more expensive than modern guitars, which if you think about it, it's kind of crazy because they're old and used. Well, I've got a vintage guitar here that I bought for 65 euros, which is around $60, you know, $70, 60 pounds. I've actually never seen what's inside. It was just advertised as vintage guitar, 65 euros. So we're going to discover what it looks like, what it is, if it's an acoustic, an electric, if it's a well-known brand, if it's nothing. So unboxing X, I made a great ax noise then. Right, here we go. Unboxing, there's, there's hardly any point for the ax this time. I don't actually know what to expect right now. Oh, that box is on there. This is a nightmare. Oh, it's, it's, it's pretty. Don't, don't break it as you take, take it out. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. That is pickup falling out. <laughs> Um, okay, so it has some issues. Last but not least, or first but not least, is the uh, the fact that it's nowhere near in tune. Um, I, I don't know what brand it is. There, oh, it's got some vintage dirt inside it, but it's quite pretty. Let's let's have a look on that camera there. Look at that. So that is a semi semi hollow or complete. Oh, there is a kind of block. There's no block. It's completely hollow. But it is, um, what's the word? It has a block of wood running through here just to support the necessary necessaries. But there's no block as there would be on, say, an ES335. It's more like a casino where it's hollow. I like these knobs. Look at these knobs. There, yeah, look. That is a pretty looking guitar. So I don't know what sort of burst you would call that, but there's no name on the headstock. And I'm guessing, because back in those days, um, they used to put badges and stuff rather than inlay something on the cheaper guitars. So, it seems, it, it's, a, it's a glued in neck. I have no idea what I've got here. That's exciting, look at that. Look at that um, input jack. That is not standard issue. That's like some weird... Th this is brilliant because I like guitars that are not um, the same hardware you see everywhere. So when you get those like cheap Strat knobs, the volume tone tone, and you see them on high-end guitars, that makes it a lot cheaper for me. That just sort of, you know, they could have made something custom. And you've got stuff like the, the Yamaha guitars, like the Yamaha SGV300, and the Yamaha Revstar, where everything is, it looks specifically made for that guitar, and almost certainly is. That's what I like about this. And that's because parts weren't readily available back then. Okay, uh, that's not broken, it's just, it should have been laid down, I guess, in transport, uh, and now it's just exploded. So, um, it's got a zero fret, it's got, I mean, there's this, this very, very strange guitar. It's got some stickiness. It's got some stickiness just here, look. As if someone's put some stickers there and then taken them off. It stinks. It stinks of... I don't want to say it, but it smells like... I'm gonna say it. It smells like the house of an old person that I once visited, which used to always smell of Sunday lunch. This doesn't smell of Sunday lunch, but it smells like that person's house. That's odd. <laughs> okay, so um, this thing is in strange condition. It's got non-original strap button there. It got what looks like an original strap button here. Um, have a look at the sides. Look at those sides. We've got like a. I don't even know what that is. Is it is it wood there? It's but it looks like wood. It, it's below the surface of the of the lacquer, and it's not. 
It's a binding. Okay, so rather than that's not sandwiched, what that is is um, they've cut a, a root in there for some binding. So that's, I'm gonna guess maple. And um, then they've rooted out this, this channel here and one here and they put binding in there because I can see around there that it's, it's laid in. That's quite some interesting work. That's some lovely bit of wood, that. My goodness. Then, I, let's put that there so I can, um, I'm using my new camera system, by the way, so I'm having issues switching the cameras. I'm switching live. So I guess what I should do is try and tune it up and get some sound out of it. I don't even know what these things are and if they work at all. There, that's the piece uh, that goes on the guitar. It's a very dark wood. Dare I say ebony. I mean, it's very, it feels like ebony. It's so smooth um, and it feels like ebony. Then we've got a piece of what is almost certainly rosewood with this grooved, smelly <laughs> uh, bridge. Again, I, I, I don't know what that is exactly, but here's the issue. We have some, some screws that have been adapted. So these are just, I don't know if they're original because they look like cut off, uh, actually they're cut off nails. And I thought that would have gone Ah, I got it. I know how they do it. So I really don't know how that goes together. But there's only really two ways. So no, it can't be that way because the nails are going to fall out. Fun, isn't it? A kind of working bridge. I'm going to do this very gently because we don't know how old the strings are and certainly... Is there a truss rod? I don't believe there's a truss rod. No, there isn't. I mean, it certainly looks nice. Goodness, things falling all over the place. I don't know what strings are on this, but they're they're not regulation. Oh no. I just dropped the nail in the guitar. Oh God, I've turned a possibly 20 minute video into a 40 minute experience. I am the world's biggest idiot. I can see it. Is it magnetic? Is the screwdriver magnetic? <laughs> Pleased as punch. All right, stupid mistake, don't do it again, but rectified it. <laughs> Nothing's creaking, I've just noticed. You know, like, I'm expecting this thing to creak and, and rust and, and do all sorts of stuff, but nothing's creaking. The machine heads are turning nicely. Um, that is a wonderful piece of engineering. Before I actually tune this properly, let's just take a look at this section here. Look, that's been milled and engineered by an expert. Whether it works or not, we'll, we're yet to find out because just because it looks nice doesn't mean it works. However, that's been made by some person with their actual hands. Uh, I don't know, it's been made in the, I would say, not, uh, not in high numbers as well. It's not mass produced. I love it. It's, it's really engineered. 
It's getting there, and it's it's very dull sounding. So it's certainly not. Um, it doesn't seem to be much much sustain. Yeah, so it's got a really. That's nice. That initial sustain. That initial sustain is nice. Then it dies off really quickly. So, whereas something more uh, well engineered would would you know sort of gradually go down, this one goes sustain, sustain, sustain. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're gonna to have to put it through the uh, through the amp now. <laughs> um, where does that cable go? That cable goes there. We're gonna go direct into amplifier today. The amp of choice is still the Colt from FX Amplification, and um, it's the plexi kind of sound that you're looking for when you want uh, 60s 60s Marshall sound. It's actually quite um, quite relevant today. Let's get some let's get some reverb on that as well, and then that's going to come out there. Let's see if these electronics work. They do. So I'm going to guess. So that's nothing. Oh, they've got things on them. Volume, volume, turn. So it's it's different to a Les Paul. We've got two volumes. We've got two volumes at the bottom and two tones up here. So there's no switch. So look at this dirt on my jeans. So if I turn that up, we've got this pickup on, I assume. Warm. That's fun. Let's have a go on the little wiggle stick. They're staying in tune a lot better than um, some more modern guitars that I know. I know some people that would love this guitar. So, let's get to it. I paid 65 euros for this. So, less than the price of the last pedal I bought. Um, it is, I have no idea what brand it is. There's some lovely maple on the back. It's gotta be a maple body uh, and a maple neck. It looks very much like a dried out rosewood fretboard. Let's just switch to up there, look. That fretboard is almost certainly rosewood, but it needs some needs some condition on. Actually, I don't know if it is. It looks very similar to rosewood, you know, the indentations. Please correct me if, if you actually know what that is. Um, I'm gonna guess rosewood. But the thing is, it sounds good. And it's a real old chunky neck. It's... <laughs> It's out of tune again, I expected. But I'm gonna do this up. I'm not gonna change anything. I mean, the machine heads work. So we've got a three-a-side connected. 
like on an acoustic. Um, you've got a zero fret and a, a um, that nut has been replaced at some point. That's not the original nut. Look, there's the nut there. That's a that's now what looks like a. It looks like a plastic nut, and quite honestly, that e string is popping out there. I might need to replace that, but only because the bottom e string seems to be popping. Come on, Strymon. <laughs> I'm in the key of not in tune. I have no idea where, there's no fret dots, there's no fret markers. I'm having a real tough time playing this guitar, but it feels great. I'm sure it looks great as well, next to my Lieutenant Uhura t-shirt. Um, what do you think so far? I'm, I think for 65 bucks, any guitar is a good guitar. However, this one, that's got some, some good stuff to it. I'm gonna have to open it up in another video and, um, and check it out and see what's going on and, and hopefully, See, they've not even painted that part, the, this part between the pickup and the neck. They've not even painted that part of the wood. So we can really get a look at what's going on there. Um, it's a really fun guitar. Why wouldn't it be? That's less than what you pay for like, um, like a Harley Benton or a Groat or some kind of house brand. And I know that I got a, a special, special deal. And I know that this is not a beginner's guitar because is all, when I say beginners, I mean someone who doesn't know how to check out a guitar and how to really make sure that everything works. Um, but amazingly, it does. There's some kind of strange connection system going on. I know if I open this up, I'm in for a whole world of trouble. But if you had this guitar, wouldn't you want to open it up and See what's going on. I've just noticed something else. Just this this trem system is an absolute delight. And when I say I've noticed something else, I just mean the the way it's put together. It's someone, some very mechanically minded person has built that. It seems like they've been told that they need something that's rock solid and supports, and then is able to waggle like that and give a little wiggle. Does an amazing job. So the guy I bought it off said the wood has split and grown in the body, but I don't see it. That's all I remember. He said, like, don't forget that I didn't know what I was buying. Give it some welly. It's fun. It's got this honkiness to it.
Getting, again, losing where I am on the fretboard. This is super good for my, my training because I think maybe fret markers and stuff are, are cheating. Is that possible? So that is unboxing a vintage guitar that I bought for the price of, let's say, 12 coffees, depending on where you're from, 10 coffees, four coffees, really? Where do you buy your coffee? Okay. Um, <laughs> this is an amazing fun guitar. This has earned its way into my family. Uh, I am extremely happy. It needs a few things fixing, it needs that sorting out needs to look inside there because there's some amazing stuff going on in there with some amazing kind of connection. It looks like it's been built by someone who uh, is very good at electronics but has never wired a guitar before. So very well done, but very unorthodox. If anyone knows what this guitar is, please let me know because I have no idea. Oh, no, it's all good. The guy said it was broken. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna keep playing, I'm really enjoying it. By, by taking out that bread, that neck pickup. Most of the of the travel is in that last sort of five percent. Super happy with that, even if I never go up this end. I'm guessing that this is bound to have flat wounds on it as well. I'm going to throw some flat wounds on this, hopefully, not snap the neck off, and try and reduce, um, reduce the action a little bit by about, by about a lot. <laughs> 
play about quite a lot. But. <laughs> For a guitar from that age, uh, I'm just blathering now, but for a guitar from that age with that amount of tuning stability, that is shocking. So there's one final look at it just there, look. That is such a beautiful guitar. It reminds me of so many things, so many other models that it could have been based on. But you've made it to the end of the video, congratulations. Which means that you could be part of the end of the video club if you leave whatever comment you want down below, tell me what you think about the guitar, but include what you would buy for 65 euros or the last thing you bought for around 60 bucks and is it as good as this guitar? Let me know. Uh, also click subscribe, some of you don't, I don't know why. I'll see you in one of these videos on your screen right now, thank you. I'm Andy, tatty bye.